this is the pre-lab video for the enthalpy of neutralization lab from the general chemistry lab manual. So every reaction uh, has a uh, thermodynamic component and almost most reactions either give off heat to their exothermic reactions or they absorb heat, they're endothermic. Okay, and so actually the enthalpy of reaction can give you a lot of information about how the mechanism works, you know, it can give you a lot of clues about how to optimize the reaction, whether you should heat it or cool it. You know, it's, it's a pretty useful thing to know, and so it's something that is measured quite often, and so the enthalpy of a reaction is measured in a calorimeter. And so the heat produced by the reaction then we can express, maybe this is something you've seen in lecture, perhaps not quite yet, the heat produced by the reaction is going to be absorbed then by two things. One, by the reaction itself. So the, if it's a solution reaction, it'll be the, the water, uh, the solution will absorb heat, and that'll be defined by its specific heat times the mass of that mixture times the change in temperature. But then also, uh, the other thing that'll absorb heat will be the device, the calorimeter that's actually measured in. And there will be a specific heat of that calorimeter we call the calorimeter constant, and it will also heat up. Okay, so the amount of heat given off by the reaction, of course, using the conservation of energy, will have to be absorbed then by either the reaction itself or the calorimeter constant. So you can calculate that. That's what we're going to calculate in these measurements. And then we'll be able to calculate the enthalpy of reaction by just taking that heat that's produced and dividing it by the number of moles that were involved in the reaction. Okay, so the moles of acid or, or whatever the limiting reagent happens to be. So then in this lab, you're going to determine the heat of a neutralization reaction, which is a reaction. So uh, for an acid-base pair, and there are two options. There's HCl and sodium hydroxide. There's also uh, sulfuric acid, H2SO4 plus sodium hydroxide. Now there, there's two moles of hydrogen to react, so it's a little bit different. And so the thing has two steps. We're going to determine the calorimeter constant by mixing hot and cold water. That'll just figure out how much is going into the calorimeter. And then we can repeat the reactions with acids and bases now that we know the calorimeter constant and figure out what the uh, enthalpy of neutralization is going to be. So in terms of what we want you to learn from this, one is just the, the standard things with glassware and, and, and dilutions and concentrations and taking measurements. But really, this is about acid-base reactions and about calorimetry. Okay, So calorimetry is some important concept we want you to learn, and this lab does it in, in spades. Okay, So from the lab manual, is, it's pretty much identical. Uh, instead of what they call a coffee cup calorimeter, we actually have something a little nicer. We have Dewar flasks. They actually make the thing a little bit easier uh, because they hold temperature a lot better. They're, they don't cool off quite as fast. Um, we got rid of the phosphoric acid one. Uh, there's no real need to add phosphoric acid to this. We just got three hydrogens instead of two. And then finally, we want to use larger volumes of water potentially. So they're using 50. You could probably use something a little bit longer because you need to make sure that thermometer actually gets into the top. So you might want to scale that up. You can kind of play around and see how much you do. The key is it doesn't matter how much you add, just that you add equal amounts of each one, that's one, and that you know the volumes. Okay, that's the most important thing is that you know the volumes. So I would suggest that we do this in pairs. And then the other thing is, is that if you notice, um, the manual uh, goes into some detail about using a graphical approach to determine the exact temperature of mixing, which with the Dewar flask we don't have to do as much, but I still think it's, it's a good idea, and I think that should be something that, that people do uh, in this lab. Of course, safety is important to us besides the usual safety hazards. Um, we do have glass parts with this doer, so don't drop them. They're very expensive. Also, we're going to be using acids and bases, so sort of keep con they're low concentration, but keep contact to a minimum. Okay, so the first part of the lab will just be using hot and cold uh, water. We're going to be using DI water here. We're not going to be using uh, tap, and you're going to need to get some water heated up. Um, I forget exactly what temperatures I suggested in the lab. I think it's somewhere around 40 to 5 to 50 degrees to get the temperature hot, and then you'll only have one thermometer, so then you'll have room temperature water in the doer. Okay, so you want to get that heated to a good temperature. Um, it doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, it needs to be, you know, significantly above that. And then I would let it cool, take it off, put it on maybe that ceramic plate there, and so you can measure for five minutes how fast that temperature changes. And what I would do is just kind of bounce back and forth. I've got two thermometers. You're only going to have one. But bounce back and forth and record at one minute intervals then the temperatures of each of these liquids. 
Okay, so that'll allow us to get a good idea then what the final temperature is when we actually uh, mix them. Okay, because there is, you know, the hot water is going to obviously cool off faster because it's just in a glass beaker. So it's really good to get that number uh, pretty precisely. Okay, and so then after you've done this for about five minutes, you can mix the two and uh, then measure the temperature right away, kind of give it a little bit of a swirl. I don't have the lid on it. I think the lid's probably, yeah, I put the lid on, and then you measure that, okay? And so then you're gonna do the same thing then with, H with your acid base. Now this one, you wanna have them exactly the same temperature when you add them, okay? So, so you're gonna end up heating it or potentially cooling one of them to get it to be the same temperature. That's really important that they're the same temperature because if they're not, it becomes inaccurate. Then the whole thing really is, is again, the same as it was before.